Welcome. I'm Glenn Anderson with the Olympia Fellowship of Reconciliation. For more than 25 years, this TV program has explored a wide variety of issues related to peace, social justice, and nonviolent social change. Every part of the world is interconnected in many ways. We're all part of one human family. But most Americans don't know enough about Arab culture, and most Americans don't have enough friends from countries in the Arab world. If we did, we'd be more likely to have peace instead of war. During this hour, we'll enjoy a conversation with people whose roots are in different countries within the Arab world. We'll learn something about Arab culture, and we'll sow the seeds of peace. I'm happy to welcome three guests. Farihan Bushnak has roots in Palestine. Her grandfather came from Turkey. She has been active in the Olympia community for several decades. She's initiated the proposal for the Olympia Arab Fest 2012, which the Rachel Corey Foundation is holding on October 6th. It's good to have you here. Thank you. Uh, Amira Ziada is multicultural. Her father came from Egypt and her mother came from Venezuela. She graduated from the Evergreen State College where she had studied international relations. She's been an activist most of her life and recently through the Rachel Corey Foundation for Peace and Justice. Good to have you here. Nice to be here, thanks. And Nader Bushnak uh, is from a family that came from Palestine, but he's lived in the United Arab Emirates all his life. He grew up there with friends from many different nationalities. Currently, he's studying business at St. Martin's University in Lacey, where some relatives had attended before. Welcome, good to have you here. Thank you for having me. So um, we have a, a, a group of people with interesting backgrounds and doing good things with their lives currently. Uh, I wanna just see if we can help the viewers understand some of the countries we'll be talking about. The Rachel Corey Foundation provided a map where we can see geographically how broad the Arab world is. And uh, Nader will show us some of the uh, countries we'll be mentioning. Um, this, if you can point at some of these where you can see, like you think of the Arab world as like Saudi Arabia, which has Arab in the title, but he's also, he's from the uh, United Arab Emirates, which is next door. Um, some of our guests have Palestinian roots, which is right next to, to uh, Israel. Egypt uh, is right there. And then there's an, a range of other countries that we'll be uh, mentioning during the program and we'll kind of visit these to help us get connected as, as we go. Um, you're, let's see, you have roots going back to uh, Palestine and you have a, 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 a grandfather from Turkey. So did we, I don't know if we pointed at Turkey, Turkey's kind of the southern end there. of Europe, yeah. Yeah. but also in that region and interconnected. Um, and then we mentioned uh, Amira, uh, Venezuela's not on this map, that's right. in South America, mm -hmm. but Egypt is on the map and we had pointed that out. Um, and um, then we mentioned for you, Palestine and you know, the Arab Emirates. And as we talk, there'll be some more programs that we'll be mentioning. I think probably for some of the viewers and probably for a lot of people in this country, they're confused about the concept of Arab culture and the Muslim faith. Uh, and these are different because one is a geography and a, a people, and the other is a, is a religious faith. Um, and so we should probably distinguish that. The, you know, within the Arab world that we're looking at, there are other faiths present as well. And a lot of Muslims live in other countries. Indonesia, way out in the South Pacific, has the largest uh, Muslim population of any country on earth, and that's in a, in a different hemisphere. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, is there anything else that, 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 that would be helpful at this early point to help our viewers sort things out? Um, well, I, um, for example, in Egypt, Egypt is um, it's an Arab country, and there are a lot of Muslims there, but there's also a huge um, Coptic uh, Christian community there, huge, one of the biggest mosques, um, or sorry, one of the biggest churches 
are there, and there's a huge um, community of Christians there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we live together with Christians and, um, you know, Muslims. Um, I even couldn't dis distinguish between this is a Muslim and this is a Christian. Mm -hmm. We have in our small community in Palestine many Christians that, um, you know, and here also in the United States, mm -hmm. um, uh, but we distinguish us ourselves as Arabs and not, mm -hmm. you know, uh, this is Muslim and this is a Christian. Mm -hmm. We are from the Arab world. Yeah. So. Yeah. It, it's just helpful for people to get things straight because so often people get things all confused. Right. And sometimes people think, you know, um, Iran is an Arab country or Afghanistan's an Arab country, but they're not Arabs. They're right. they're Muslim countries because there's a lot of Muslims there. Yeah. They're not Arabs. Right. And in, in <coughs> Iran, the people are yeah. very proud of being Persian. Mm -hmm. Uh, Persia has this wonderful history going back for thousands of years, and they're proud of being Persian, and, and they don't want to be called Arab because mm -hmm. they've got their own thing. And then the Farsi language uh, is different from the Arabic language. Uh, Afghanistan and, and Pakistan also has a lot of um, um, Muslims, uh -huh. but uh, they are a part of, uh, you know, they, are, they speak Persian. You well, know, that's, or, that's, that's or Pakistani, yeah, yeah. You know, Urdu and and Dari and yeah, and, yeah. and lot, some of these countries have lots of languages in them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and places like Jordan, where you have five percent of the population is Roman Catholic, but you have people of the same culture and tradition, just different religion. You know, they're both yeah. Arabs, mm -hmm. Jordanian, uh -huh. but under you know they're the same people, but just yeah. with different faiths. Yeah, so it's, it's helpful to, to not jump to conclusions <laughs> yeah. based on what somebody looks like or what language they're speaking or something, because mm -hmm. there's so much variety. Um, uh, it's, it seems as though people in the United States don't know nearly enough about mm -hmm. the Arab world, and that's part of what we're trying to do in this program. Uh, and a lot of the things that Americans do know is wrong. It's not accurate. And what can you share some of the common misunderstandings or misconceptions and then set the record straight? I mean, sometimes uh, they don't know exactly what are the Arab countries. And you see, they think people f that are Indian uh, or uh, from Afghanistan are Arabic, you know. Mm -hmm. they, but these are countries that are not Arabic, yeah. but have the same religion as we talked about. Yeah. And I think just knowing what are the Arabic countries would be helpful. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of, um, you know, you see TV, you read the news, um, and, pe you know, a lot of people think that, you know, all Arabs are terrorists and they hate the West. Well, you know, we're Arabs. I mean, I'm an Arab and I'm a human rights activist. So uh -huh. It's quite the opposite. Right. Yeah. Well, and if you look at the, in, in the United States, uh, we've had a number of uh, massive shooting incidents and other kind of ter terrorists, and it's been white people, often with right-wing politics. So, I mean, that's... Yeah, and also, you know, the way they, um, they dress or the way they, you know, um, behave, it's just their, their culture, you know, it's just... Um, um, that's, uh, you know, our religious people, you know, cover themselves. Mm -hmm. um, it's, um, yeah. Yeah, there, 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 we have, there's kind of a, uh, a normal assumption that for each person, whatever I do is the right way to do something. And if somebody else does something differently, well, they must be wrong. Mm -hmm. And it's not, you know, they don't have enough balance to see, well, I've been doing something one way, but somebody else's way might be just as good as my way. Mm -hmm. Whether it's foods we eat or ways that we practice our faiths or ways that we whatever. Yeah. Uh, so um, what, what are some of the main features or some of the main factors within Arab culture? What, are there some things that are common throughout many of the Arab countries? Um, 
Uh, Arabic Arab people are um, very um, um, generous. They have um, they um, they care about family a lot, and um, they they are helpful. They help people. They have um, culture. They are educated. Um, um, there are um, poetry in in their culture, um, you know, uh, music and and dance and um, uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful mm -hmm. culture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're a very hospitable. You know, hospitable they're very too. Yeah. Yes. I, you know, I always when I go to Jordan, you know, sometimes we go out to Wadi Rum, as you can see in some of the pictures. You know, hiking. And you see these Bedouins living in tents, mm -hmm. and the, they, you know, they always come to talk to you and get to know you, and they're interested in seeing new people. But they always offer you coffee, mm -hmm. you know. Even if you say no because you're trying to be polite, but they, they really want you to, you know, stop by, have a coffee, make mm -hmm. sure you're doing well. Yeah. So they have that, uh, you know, very hospitable, and mm -hmm. it's in in all of the Arabic countries. Mm -hmm. And they're very social and very um, <laughs> cheerful a lot of times. So they always like love to laugh and talk to you and, like you said, share a cup of coffee and, you know, it's really friendly. They're very friendly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is different from what you would think if you just like read United States newspapers right. or talked, you know, heard U.S. politicians or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's part of what we want to accomplish through this. TV program here is, is uh, get some more accurate uh, information out there. Um, there are some aspects of Arab culture that most people in this country aren't aware of. I mean, it's like they invented the zero mm -hmm. and algebra. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and there are some other scientific advances that, that go back that, that we, don't, we don't realize because they're part of our current you know, lifestyle with algebra and zeros to science. Mm -hmm. And there is a program on the Arab uh, program on, on the um, festival that uh, will point that um, oh. mm -hmm. 1001 um, about, uh, you know, the Arab background and, and science. Good, good, yeah. And that'll be the October 6th thing. It's that October 6th. Mm -hmm. Some of the people watching this program, if you're watching this early in October, they'll be able to attend. And yes. If, mm -hmm. Otherwise, they will have missed it, but there will be probably ways of catching up and afterwards. Everybody's welcome yes. mm -hmm. to share that. Um, you know, we, we've got uh, this large geographic expanse, but yet within, within the Arab world, there are some differences between the countries the, and, the, and, and the, the peoples. Uh, partly because of historical reasons, like Algeria, toward the western end of this, used to be a French colony, so there's a heavy French language and French aspect to it, whereas others don't have that. Uh, are there some other differences you think are worth highlighting? I think some of the countries have different dialects, you know, even neighboring countries. You see them, even if it's a little bit off, some of the letters are said a little different, but they're always able to communicate with each other. Mm -hmm. Even though it's a different dialect, uh -huh. uh, but the language is uh, using the same letters and uh -huh. such. Yeah. And it's, it's important to note that there's uh, 22 different Arab countries, um, and like you said, it's true, um, Egypt has a different dialect than um, almost all the other Arab countries, and it's interesting, like in school I was trying to take Arabic classes, I grew up learning Egyptian Arabic, so it's kind of like, that's not how you say that, you mm -hmm. know? But but it's all really similar. And um, in Egypt, there's like a big uh, Spanish population from Spain. Oh. Um, <clears throat> I imagine a lot of um, other countries, it's like that. There's some huge uh, diversity in, in those Arab countries as well. Uh -huh. They all have the Arabic language, the high Arabic language um, that is the uh, the Quran written, you know, in mm -hmm. high Arabic. Mm -hmm. um, everybody understand each other when mm -hmm. they talk high Arabic. Okay. In, in books, reading the books, 
or the Quran, or um, that's in high Arabic. But the dialects, you know, are different. Yeah, for, for ordinary spoken conversation. Right. Like if I'm over at your house and we're talking, or if we're in the marketplace or something. Like mm -hmm. Syria, Jordan, Palestine um, are really close in, you know, their language. Mm -hmm. uh, Egypt too, but they use some words that we don't know about it and vice versa. Mm -hmm. North Africa is, is harder to understand their language, mm -hmm. their dialects, but we can pick up some words that they would, you know, uh, talk about. Uh -huh. um, let's, let's find out some more about each of you as a person, what your, your own geographic roots are, family roots and then some of your experiences. Um, you, you come out of Palestinian roots. Uh, your grandfather had come from Turkey. Was he just living there or was he more Turkish? Uh, he was Turkish, but uh, you know, that was a long time ago. I don't know him either. Uh -huh. and I've never met him. Um, that's my mother's father. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we like the family, my our family, Boshna, came from uh, Yugoslavia, about 15, um, uh, you know, 1,300 years. Oh. So um, they went um, um, from Yugoslavia, immigrated to Palestine. Um, and then they lived in Palestine from 1,800 uh, on mm -hmm. to uh, 48. And then you were born in the West Bank and was, occupied territories? I was, I, yeah, I was born in the West Bank uh, in Jenin and uh, lived there till I was graduated from high school. Mm -hmm. um, I went to Germany for three years. I studied their lab technician and then um, um, I came to, I got married and came uh, 74 to United States, mm -hmm. to Olympia here. Uh -huh. Yeah, you've been around a long time and, and active doing lots of good things. Yes, yes. <laughs> Including working in your uh, profession as medical assistant? Uh, I uh, went to SPSCC and um, graduated a medical assistant. Uh -huh. uh, worked for 20 years uh, with West Coast Clinic and um, I just, two years ago I, had you know to quit, <laughs> uh <-huh. Okay>. retired. <laughs> uh -huh. And, so. and I, you've been working from pretty much from the beginning with the uh, Rachel Corey Foundation. Yes, yes, we we support them, you know, fully, whatever uh -huh. you, they do, uh -huh. and uh, we appreciate everything they do for the Palestinians yeah. and the Arab world. Yeah. Um, it's just. Um, a great ambassador for the Palestinians. Yes, yes. And I've, I've enjoyed talking with your husband on a number of occasions. He's such a sweet person to talk with. <laughs> oh, thank and you. And so good, and he has good politics, too. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, and so it's always fun to connect with you and, and Assad. Oh, thank you. Um, you, you, uh, you came up with the idea for having the Rachel Corey Foundation um, organized this Arab, Olympia Arab Fest 2012 that comes mm -hmm. up on October 12. What was what was behind it? What caused you to well, pursue that? Um, you know, uh, in Seattle there are a lot of uh, Arab community there, mm -hmm. and uh, they wanted to highlight the Arab culture, and they started 1999 to do their uh, Arab festival. And uh, we've been, you know, going every couple of years. They do it every couple of years, and they do a really good job, mm -hmm. uh, which is the um, uh, in Seattle at Seattle Center. Mm -hmm. And so um, I was fascinated, and I said, "Why not in Olympia?" And my husband says, "Are you crazy? You know, you, there is no not many Arabs in here." You know, and I said. You know, all our friends here, we've been in this place for over, you know, about 40 years, and he's been here 50 years. So we accumulated a lot of friends, mm -hmm. and, and they are our family, 
yeah. you know, so or extended family. So, um, so I said uh, we should do it, and I got connected with the Rachel Corey Foundation, and because they have a background of um, you know um, uh, supporting uh, Palestine and the Arab world and. They would just jump to the opportunity yeah. to to do it. Well, yeah, it's a natural for them because they're it's so good at connecting yes. people. They get people connected so we can get to know each other. Yes, and yeah, well known in Olympia, and so uh, and we started right away. We started. At, we've been working on it for uh, a year or so. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Great. It's a lot of work yeah. just for a few hours of doing, you know, the festival. Oh, well, but it's worth it's worth doing it. Uh, it is. It, it is. is. I'm yeah. doing it from the bottom of my heart. Uh -huh. mm. I just wanted okay. to. You said it was happening on October 12th. It's happening uh, on October 6th. Six. Six. Oh, yeah. six is what six. I meant. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's <laughs> the year 2012. Maybe right. that's right. Yeah. Thank you. Right. I want to check with you next because you're working mm. on the same project. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us something from your. Um, well, let's start with your your background. Uh, okay. You you have um, a father from Egypt and a mother from Venezuela, so you're multicultural right from the outset. Mm -hmm. And um, what uh, what can, what can you tell us about having roots that are so <coughs> diverse? Yeah, so um, I was born in Venezuela, but my parents had been living in the United States for uh, several years and had uh, become citizens. So I was born a citizen. But um, I grew up in the United States. And it's interesting because because my dad's Egyptian, my mother's Venezuelan, um, and my dad spoke Arabic, my mom spoke Spanish, but they spoke to each other in English. Mm -hmm. So in the house, we spoke to each other in English, but I had my mom teaching me Spanish and my dad teaching me Arabic. So it was like I was learning speaking three different languages in the house mm -hmm. um, growing up. Mm -hmm. um, I'm the youngest, though, so I... I didn't pick up, you know, Arabic and Spanish as well as my older brothers and sisters, but um, yeah, I definitely learned it there. And um, it was interesting holidays. My mom, my dad was uh, raised a Muslim. My mother grew up a Catholic, so we celebrated Christmas and we celebrated Eid and Ramadan and you know <laughs> Easter and all the different holidays. It was really, um, it was really fun. Uh -huh. And you've been back to Egypt a number of times? Yeah, we, I used to go every other summer um, when I was in grade school, and we would go for three months at a time. And I've probably been about 10 times. The last time I was there was 2005, or five years ago. Anyways, 2007, you know, 2007. Something like that? <laughs> huh. and, and, and so you're, you're kind of able to keep in touch with, with what it's like to be Egyptian because you're there for enough block of time and you'd have some roots. Right, yeah, and all my um, my parents are, well, my dad has a sister that is now living in California, but my parents are the only immigrants from their families out of their country, so all my cousins, aunts, oh. uncles, you know, on my dad's side are in Egypt <laughs> and all my cousins, aunts, uncles, and my mom's side are in Venezuela, and, wow. and I keep in touch with them, so, um, yes. Yeah, well, so. that's, that's a handy way because if you go visit somebody, you've got a free place to stay. Right, yeah. You know, and, and lots mm -hmm. of good food no matter where you go. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you, you went to the Evergreen State College, and then at that time, you were interning with the Rachel Corey Foundation? Yeah, so uh, my second year at the Evergreen State College, um, I took a class, and we had to do some sort of statistical um, project involving a nonprofit organization. So um, I got involved. I heard about Rachel Corey Foundation just through going being a student at Evergreen. And I was really interested in getting involved with them because I was studying international relations with emphasis in the Middle East. So I got involved with them doing a statistical analysis of their fundraising efforts and um, stayed involved with them um, through my next course, which was um, half internship, half uh, classwork, and it was a social justice course. So I stayed involved with them, did um, a lot of work with uh, BDS and planning and the, the boycott, divest boycott, divestment, and sanctions, sanctions movement. Yeah. And I think we'll talk about that a little yeah. later. Well, why don't, we, why don't we mention it right now then? <coughs> okay. So, um, so what, the, what, what is that movement and, mm -hmm. and what are they trying to accomplish? So in 2005, Palestinian civil society um, got together over 700 different um, organizations and 
put out a call to the international community to uh, boycott, divest, and sanction um, against uh, the government of Israel to help um, encourage them to change their policies against the Palestinian people. Um, the movement is growing. Um, it's, it's grown a lot faster outside of the United States, but it is growing here. And the call is, there's three requirements to end the boycott. Um, to dismantle the wall um, that is separate, you know, separating all the uh, land in Palestine. Yeah, and this, this is the, the wall that the government of Israel right. built that is really preventing Palestinian Movement. people from, in some cases, getting to their own farmland. Mm -hmm. The wall goes between your house and your farm. Right. Or it prevents you from getting to your job to school or from or, school yeah. or getting to the doctor's office or whatever. Exactly, so yeah. it's a very brutal uh, mm -hmm. wall. And um, to uh, recognize and respect the right for refugees to return back to Palestine. And um, uh, dismantle the wall the right of return, and also to uh, recognize the borders um, in uh, relation to the 1967 uh, agreement, uh, yeah. Yeah. UN resolution. Yeah, yeah, because Israel has just seized a lot of land right. since then and from Palestine, and has is building settlements on land that that, that Israel doesn't own. Exactly, yeah. it doesn't belong to them. Yeah. So <laughs> the 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 boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement is designed to apply economic pressure. Mm -hmm. Then, so that the government of Israel would would have to, yeah, uh, will have accommodate to change their yeah. policies. Yeah, and, and economic sanctions or economic boycotts and divestment movements had worked very well in South Africa when the South African government uh, some years ago, which was a tiny white minority ruling over a lot of black people, had business connections that. Um, were vulnerable to boycotts and divestment. So a number of U.S. companies and a lot of college campuses mm -hmm. refused to deal with businesses that dealt with South Africa. Mm -hmm. And a lot of U.S. companies got pressured by their stockholders and others to to get out and stop supporting mm -hmm. that apartheid re regime. Yeah, so I did that kind of work with them and I stayed involved with the Rachel Corey Foundation um, after I graduated in 2010 for a year. I moved to Australia all of 2011, and now I came back and I just got hired in June to work on the Arab Festival. Okay, and so what are you doing to help organize this October uh, 6th event? I am uh, leading a few of the projects. Um, I am working on the programming, so getting performers, uh, dancers, you know. We're, um, I'm also helping with the logistics of the main event. Um, I'm helping plan our mural cafe and hookah lounge. That so it'll be an outdoor cafe, mm -hmm. um, happening at the Olympia Rafa Solidarity mural. It'll be yeah. Friday and Saturday night. So that's right downtown. Yeah. Uh, near Capitol Way and, and mm -hmm. State. On the corner of State and Capitol. Yeah. Um, nice. Yeah, and um, just a few other things like that. Planning the uh, headlining evening event as well. Uh huh. Great. Mm -hmm. um, let's connect with you to get something of your background, you, you've got an interesting background. You have some multicultural things going back from yeah. your grandparents. Tell us your roots. Well, <clears throat> I'll start off with uh, my father's families from, their roots are from Palestine, but they've, my parents and my father's parents have lived in the United Arab Emirates all their lives. And uh, my mother's family, my her, my grandfather from my mother's side is Jordanian, and my grandmother is Bosnian, and they currently live in Jordan. Yeah, and Bosnia was was part of Yugoslavia, Yugoslavia. Exactly. so that would have been sort of the southern part, middle of the southern part of, yeah. just off the map, just yeah. north of the map. <laughs> yeah, so more more geographic spread. Yeah, but I've been raised all my life in the United Arab Emirates, so it is home to me. Yeah, and and there's some uh, the United Arab Emirates formed really in what 1971. Yeah, mm -hmm. from is it seven different S seven emirates? Uh, so every emirate has a ruler. 
Uh, it's uh, you, so, like a fed federation. Uh -huh. So every ruler uh, rules his emirate or state is another word for emirate. Uh -huh. And they have one president that uh, they have one federal law and one president that rules all the seven emirates. Uh -huh. And and um, I, I did some background reading, and it was it was interesting how they've been able to work things. Uh, yeah. t tell us some more about their uh, how how they've evolved, how your country has evolved in the last forty years. Well, they start. They found the natural resource of crude oil in uh, under the United Arab Emirates. So they've used that to uh, gain revenues. You know, exporting to other countries that need this oil, mm -hmm. and it, it is government-owned oil. So there are no private entities. There's no competition. There's no price changes. There's no uh, budget cuts. So the government uses. All, uses this the sale of all this oil to uh, generate income into the country and with that income they build other projects and streets roads uh, buildings the, the world's tallest building right yes actually in Dubai <laughs> yeah and yeah. then huge airports and, yeah and they're I mean, still working all, on that. so so as, as we were talking on the phone and and you were describing how it became multicultural with so much construction going on and <laughs> workers coming from a bunch of other countries, India and Pakistan and uh, a bunch of places. Well, only the population, 18% of the population is only local, Emirati. And you have all other foreigners coming to the United Arab Emirates. The, the same reason why people come to the US, mm -hmm. because they want a better life. You know, they want to, uh, prosper financially. So mm -hmm. they see these opportunities of a growing country in the Emirates. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they move there with their families and uh, find good work. There's no taxes, so it does have its benefits for foreigners. Uh -huh. It does look appealing. Yeah. So, but, you know, you grow up with people from different backgrounds, 72% from other countries. Yeah. So. You know, every resident knows an Arab, a uh, Pakistani, an Indian, uh, an American, a uh, South African, a, you know, a British, Irish, and so forth. Yeah. So you went to school with people from lots of places. You went to a private school? I did. And there are, what, about half the schools there are private? Is that right? Yeah. A, a lot like of that? the, there are a lot of private schools oh. uh, because the population is so diverse. There are different needs for people. Mm -hmm. Some. Uh, prefer there are British schools, you know, there are American schools, there are uh, uh, Indian schools yeah. and such, but it's to keep the same system because Americans living in the UAE would want their children to have, you know, the principles and the background of an American school, uh -huh. what the American uh, knowledge. So yeah. Yeah. these schools do offer offer that for foreigners. Yeah. But you do grow up with a, a lot of people from different uh, cultures and countries all in, going to the same school. Uh -huh. So it's interesting. You learn a little bit about every country. Yeah, and, and then you're, you end up from the, we talked on the phone to prepare for the program, and you talked about how people learn to get along with everybody. Oh, yeah. You know, and which is something uh, it seems really special. Yeah, I mean, the, it's the intercultural comp competency. You know, people know how to talk to one another from different uh, backgrounds and languages. You know, the, if you speak to friends in English, even though I'm Arabic and he's Italian, but we communicate in English and mm -hmm. we know a little bit about each other. You know, I don't need to know too many details about Italy, but it creates that uh, sense of how to approach another person from a different background. Uh -huh. And you said like movie theaters would show films from the different countries? Yeah, you have the regular Hollywood movies and then they try to promote uh, movies made, German movies, so you have the subtitles in English and French uh, 
and also the Hollywood movies, they, all, every movie in the cinema has English uh, or Arabic subtitles and uh, French and uh, yeah, the mainly Arabic, mm -hmm. uh, Arabic and French, you know, uh -huh. just to, uh, <laughs> for all these foreigners yeah. living. What, what has been your experience? You, how long have you been in the United States? Since 2008. I okay. came here to study. Yeah, and you're at, at St. Martin's in Lacey where you yes. have other family members who had gone there before you. Yes, I'm actually a third generation legacy at St. Martin's. <laughs> uh, going back to actually uh, Ferry Hand's husband, As Asad. Uh -huh. uh, he's the first one that studied there, so he's my grandfather's <coughs> brother. Uh -huh. And uh, then my father came and my father's brother, my uncle, and uh, some of their cousins actually went there. Mm -hmm. So a couple family members have been to the school, and it, it's a it's a good feeling when you still there are still people that work at the school that taught my father and they taught my uncle and uh -huh. they taught me. So uh -huh. uh, it it is a good feeling when they know the family name and they can relate. Yeah. To you. <coughs> um, what, what's been your experience of being here now? How, how has it been for you in the Olympia area? I actually like it a lot in Olympia. Washington, overall, I, you know, there's something different about the people in Washington. I feel they are, uh, you know, r richer uh, quality or, you know, uh, I don't know how to say it exactly, but they're interesting, you know. Even when they say, uh, you know, they find out I'm um, Arabic, they, you know, they start to ask questions, and they they're interested in knowing more than what they know about Arabs, and I, yeah. I like that about uh, Washingtonians. Yeah, yeah, good. Um, I want to check in with with you folks. You and I on the phone had talked about the the Arab mm. Spring, the democracy movement. Mm. We talked just a little bit. I wonder if we could any of us talk a bit more. In in early 2011, starting in Tunisia, which is <coughs> there, mm. uh, and and moving on to other places, including Egypt and a, a number of countries, uh, people who had been like stomped on a long time by the economic elites and the political and the military and the police and and everybody um, basically rose up and says we're not going to take this anymore we we demand democracy we demand a decent future and stuff and this thing just swept through that area and people uh, got caught by surprise they didn't see it coming mm -hmm. and and I wonder if, if you, you and I had mentioned this just briefly on the phone when we were preparing for the show, but I wonder if you or, or anybody uh, could have some insights into this. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's really exciting. I mean, it's a real revolution, at least I don't know too much about um, any of them, I'm not an expert, but um, specifically Egypt, because I have a lot of family there. Yeah. Um, it's really exciting. It's a revolution that's happening um, in our lifetime, and it, and especially in Egypt's particular case, they, it was very youth, um, very youth built, you know, the mm -hmm. youth created it. They called it like a Facebook revolution. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it is, it's, the population of Egypt is mostly youth, um, people in their 20s or younger. Yeah. And these are the people that <clears throat> are um, going to take this forward and they just hope for better um, education systems, better, um, a less class, a more classless society, and they really want democracy. They want to say in how their countries run and how things are going, and and I think it's happening. I mean, it's still really new, but there have been a lot of uh, successes. Yeah, so. and there are some bumps along the way, and right. things are, as we're taping this program now in mid uh, mid August, mm -hmm. and it'll run in October. Who knows how things will change by October right. or beyond? Because mm -hmm. people will be able to watch this program later on on our website mm -hmm. and and so forth. But um, it, it it's kind of hard to stomp down a movement once people have risen up. Oh, and they're still really mobilized. They're still very active. It's not like okay, they kicked out the president and now they're sitting around. They are there. They're protesting. They're getting. 
and acting for what they want politically and and um, socially. And I would say about Egypt too that uh, it all happened peacefully. Actually, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it just um, at one uh, one day or a couple of days that they, you know, there was um, some. Um, um, you know, people died, of course, and, and injured and all of that, but usually it was a peaceful, mm -hmm. peaceful uh, revolution. Yeah, and that was the case yes. in, in Tunisia and several of these places. And some of them that went violent um, had more, more problems along the way. I mean, Libya mm -hmm. had a lot of problems, and, and uh, as we're doing the show now in mid-August, uh, Syria, Syria is still because mm -hmm. instead of doing a nonviolent thing, they went for a violent thing, and and it just got all tangled up. And it's people in the United States are thinking, oh, here's our chance to get back at Russia, which has been an ally of Syria, and and here's a, it's a proxy war because Iran has been a an ally of Syria. So it's just all tangled up in this mm -hmm. this crappy politics of it. Mm -hmm. Whereas the good nonviolent ones out of Tunisia and Egypt and and some others, you know, were able to actually make progress. Mm -hmm. And there is no going back. Yeah, that's right. That's, I mean, people want their um, freedom, once they, they want to live in peace mm -hmm. and not, uh, you know, being um, tracked everywhere they go and whatever they say, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, they are, like you said, stomped on. Mm -hmm. So they are, they had enough yeah. of yeah. this. And yeah. we are all glad about that, mm -hmm. you know, what's happening in the Middle yeah. East. It's just right. a fantastic thing. Yeah. yeah, we did one of our TV programs about that. Um, uh, it was July 2011 TV program. We had Steve Naiva, who's mm. an expert on this yes. region. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was our guest, and he just sort of walked us through the different countries and what the real roots of it were, mm -hmm. which in many cases are different from what you'd think by reading the newspaper. Mm -hmm. and, and he actually went there to, oh, he, he, to he has a, uh, Egypt. Yeah, yes. he has a lot of hands-on experience, mm -hmm. and he knows a lot, and he uh, studies a lot and, and writes good things. But, mm -hmm. yeah, so that's our July 2011 TV program that we taped right here, and mm -hmm. people can watch that through our website olympiafor.org, click on the TV programs link, and then scroll down to July 2011. It's a fascinating show. Mm -hmm. And of course, things have changed in the year or more mm -hmm. since then, but right. uh, it's a great background on the issue. Yeah, it's inspiring. I literally, when I, I was watching TV, when uh, the president um, stepped down, the president of Egypt, Mubarak, yeah, Mubarak and yeah. I like, literally cried for probably uh, an hour, just yeah. was like so happy and yeah. so inspired and felt yeah. really and, proud. And, and the, you know, the, the United States government, which is so often very clueless about things, tried to tell Egypt, the people of Egypt, that now that Mubarak is gone, you need to replace him with this guy named Suleiman. And he was the CIA's <laughs> contact point in yeah. Egypt, and he was in charge of the CIA's torture program in, in Egypt. <laughs> and, and Obama and Hillary Clinton thought that they could tell the Egyptian people to oh, get to this do. CIA mm. stooge <laughs> to, to be their new person. I mean, how, how yeah. clueless yeah. are, are, are the, the politicians in this country if they think mm -hmm. they can, after people have won some freedom, and then, no, right. we want you to be under the thumb of a CIA torture guy. Oh, give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the, one of the fun things about this program is being able to talk about our, the various roots. And, and in this country, which probably is better known than, than any country as a nation of immigrants, I mean, the, the Indians who came here over 10,000 years ago apparently came across the land bridge that connected Siberia and Alaska and then came down. That's, the, that's the, what the anthropologists told us happened, mm -hmm. and that was more than 10,000 years ago. And everybody else came here in various ways and in various conditions, some against their will from Africa during the slave era. Mm -hmm. But uh, this, this, this mix of people, you know, if, if we want to get to know each other and, and interact and learn from each other, we could we could be pretty smart, uh, but it, it's, it's interesting to see. And then some people, for when I, like when I was young, 
people kept referring to this as a melting pot, as if what you're supposed to do is once you get here, leave your old country behind, leave your old culture behind, leave your old language behind, and just be in the mix of a melting pot. And, and in the subsequent decades, people said, no, we're, we're better off with this rich diversity so that That's right. we, we keep our, uh, some of our language and we keep some of our food and we keep some of our culture and our religions and our other ways. And then we, we become uh, diverse and... Uh, they uh, used to change the, na the names too. Yes. You know, the Italian names that they couldn't yeah. they, you know, pronounce. You know, this and this name, you know, should go. Right. Yeah. And and the people uh, that they came early on, they would, um, you know, forget actually about their culture and, you know, mm -hmm. so it will, they will melt with the Americans. Yeah. But uh, then the kids tried to bring back their culture too. Uh-huh. Yeah, there, there, there. For some, sometimes there's like a sense of shame if you have an accent from the old country, mm -hmm. or if your grandparent, your parents, or your grandparents uh, still, you know, spoke or acted or cooked <coughs> like the the old country. And and I, I think people now are appreciating our our different heritage more than they did like when I was young when people. And before that, because there, there was pressure on people. Yeah. And it's, it's a good idea to take you know, the good things from both cultures mm -hmm. and put them together and you know, take the best out of yeah. the two yeah. Yeah. and um, you know, live your life yeah. Yeah. that well, way. When, yeah, when, 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 when the United States was setting up Indian reservations and they were pushing the Indians there and they would make the, the Indian kids learn English and they would actually punish them for speaking the old language. Mm -hmm. and, and now mm -hmm. a lot of those old Indian languages have died out. And in some cases, it's only a few people and they still know them, the older people, but they're trying to revive, in some cases, they're mm -hmm. trying to revive the ones that still could come back. And they used to take them to schools, take them from yeah. their families and yeah. put them in schools. Right, yeah. right. Um, so uh, is there anything else you want to say about the, this multicultural appreciation that we share. I think that everybody should be strong, you know, their cultural background to know their traditions, you know. Mm -hmm. Even I, I'm, I've moved to the U.S. I'm living here, mm -hmm. you know, I'm living by myself, but I'm gonna uphold my traditions, my, you know, I will adapt to certain things, mm -hmm. uh, but there are, there are other things where, you know, you should be, uh, you know, this be proud. Like this is the way we do things. Mm -hmm. You know, in my religion, or mm -hmm. I'm gonna have Arabic coffee for breakfast, even though it's very strong. You know, or uh -huh. uh, dates, for example. I, I my grandmother sent me some dates. Uh -huh. You know, in a little container, but I have dates every day. Yeah. Three dates. That's one of the things that that that, that you grow as an agricultural product. Yeah, exactly. It, yeah. it was always at my grandmother's house. You know, she'd always offer us dates when yeah. we came over. You know. And even though I am moved to the yeah. U.S., uh -huh. I am still uh, tied to my culture and tradition. Yeah. Well, uh, years ago, I, I, somebody told me about um, flying from Japan to the United States. Somebody from Seattle uh, was flying back to Seattle from Japan and uh, was seated behind uh, a couple of secretaries from Seattle just observing from the conversation, you know. And these, these uh, young women uh, had gone to Japan just for the weekend, just mm -hmm. to kind of check out this place. They were all secretaries, apparently, from the conversation. And they were complaining on the way back from Japan that nobody in Japan knew how to make a good hamburger. <laughs> it's like, whoa, come on, you're in some other country. Enjoy their food. <laughs> that, that's you know. one thing I was thinking about, actually, the other day. I was. Uh, at Hans Burger in Lacey. Oh, yeah. And I was looking at the menu. It's the, no other place in the world will you find, you know, wings, buffalo wings next to chicken teriyaki uh, and you know, <laughs> different yeah. types of things all yeah. in one place yeah. where you yeah. can find, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's talk some more about the, the October 6th event that, you're, that you folks are working on, yeah. the, the Olympia Arab Fest 2012. Um, what would somebody 
discover if they go there, what would they find? You mentioned a couple things. Tell us some more about what they'd be able to enjoy, either one of you. Okay, <clears throat> go first. <laughs> we have a host of things, you know, to offer at the Arab Festival, and we've been working really hard of uh, bringing uh, a lot of uh, performers mm -hmm. uh, to the stage. Um, yeah, and this is all at the Olympia Center. Uh, at the Olympia downtown Center, Olympia, downtown. Uh, 222 Columbia Northwest. That's mm -hmm. right. So just, just north of state. And there's going to be music, Arabic music, and dance, and dabke, which is folklore dance uh, from um, Palestine and from uh, Lebanon, and uh, daoud, you know, the instrument that uh -huh. they use in the in, uh, Middle East. Um, there are going to be um, a uh, fashion show of different countries, oh, you know, yeah. uh, that we can have or get. get, mm -hmm. get. Um, there are going to be uh, vendors from um, uh, Egypt and and um, Egypt and Palestine, mm -hmm. Morocco, and Morocco, Sudan, and, Sudan and Somal. Somalia. Okay, they have things to to um, you know to sell to and show. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, also children's corner, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. lots of, we had just a meeting today about what to do with the children there. We wanted mm -hmm. to be involved too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we will have food, all kinds of uh, food uh, that uh, to purchase for lunch. And then uh, we will have a cafe mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. the mural which is Arabic coffee and sweets. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's the mural that yeah. you mentioned. It's, it's, yes. on, uh, it's painted on the, the north side of the uh, labor building. Yeah, there. the Brotherhood. Uh, yeah, the too. Brotherhood Tavern. People yeah. don't mind know that. Yeah, but right on state mm -hmm. uh, and capital way. And in the upper right corner of that mural, which is a tree with lots of leaves on it, mm -hmm. and up in the upper right corner is a blue leaf with a white dove on it that's the Olympia FOI. Fellowship of Reconciliation. That's right. Uh -huh. yeah. I mean, there also, I don't know, there's gonna, like, well, there'll be a hookah lounge too where you can smoke shisha in that cafe. There's also an evening headlining event. We'll have a, we have a comedian right now and we're planning on getting a few others, um, performers. And we're, um, on Saturday, there's gonna be um, Arab Films playing at the Olympia Film Society oh, as well. Yeah, so it's really an all weekend event. Yeah, and something for everybody then. <clears throat> yeah. Kids and people who like films and people exactly. who want to get some good coffee like and, and people who like, all the good stuff. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful yeah. things. I want to put in a plug for the Rachel Corey Foundation, which has been doing mm -hmm. such good work mm -hmm. uh, for about a decade now. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I used to, uh, uh, Rachel Corey was a good friend of mine, and we collaborated, we worked together on several projects, and she was just a delight to work with. And I'm so glad that, that, that her sense of doing things uh, and her sense of, of international cooperation is still alive and, mm -hmm. and, and thriving. Um, and, and people can get more information at uh, www.rachelcoreyfoundation.org. Mm -hmm. It's a great organization and it certainly deserves our support. Um, so I want to uh, thank all of you folks for having joined us for this hour. It's been fun talking mm -hmm. with all of you and learning about you and your backgrounds and, and all the good work that you're doing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank um, you for having us. And we want to thank all the folks who've been watching as well. Um, more and more, the whole world is closely interconnected. At the Olympia Fellowship of Reconciliation's Peace Vigils, one of the signs that we often hold says, all people are one human family. The United States would be much better off as a nation if we had a better understanding and appreciation for other cultures, including Arab cultures. For information about the October 6th event and the whole weekend event, then you can contact the Rachel Corey Foundation for Peace and Justice. It's based in Olympia at 360-754-3998. And their website is www.rachelcoreyfoundation.org. If you'd like to read, an excellent source of information throughout the whole Middle East region 
is the Middle East Research and Information Project. They publish Middle East Report, and you can read uh, a lot of things about various countries at their website, www.merip.org. Beyond that, you can get information about a whole lot of different issues and activities by contacting the Olympia Fellowship of Reconciliation at 360-491-9093, www.olympiafor.org. And you can watch back episodes of this TV series there, including the one that we did for July 2011 about the Arab world's democracy movement. We are all one human family. We all share one planet. We can create a better world, but we all have to do our part, and the world needs whatever you may have to offer. Thanks. Thank you.